Hello everyone, it's Karen Berniston. Welcome to our September Spotlight class. So we are going to be making this fun autumn themed card tonight that features our photo collage die, but decorated with all of these fun autumn themed elements. Okay, and this is a nice big card. This is a five by seven card. And this is gonna take up the majority of our class time tonight. But uh, the design of this was to, actually my business partner, Tanya actually designed this class. And so she did do a bonus tag. So we will get to this tonight as well and be able to make the happy fall tags. You'll make both of these projects. So what do you need tonight? So I, it's a good idea if you've printed your hand out, it's a good idea because you could refer to it. It does have some nice diagrams and things in it and pictures of, you know, turkeys and things um, for assembly. And then you're gonna need, of course, your prepped kit. So this is not how you bought it. How you bought it was a bulk kind of pack of the papers and cardstocks and things that you need. And then what you did is you followed the prep work video, okay, which is linked here at the top of your handout, to do this paper pre-cutting instructions. You did all your die cutting. You did that all as prep work. And that took your big bulky materials down to something where we have everything already die cut and ready to assemble. So this video tonight is the assembly of these cards. If you haven't done that prep work yet, but you have a kit, then you can go back and do that prep work at any time. You can come back and watch this video at any time. So you are completely in control. Um, if you've just kind of wandered by and you're like, oh, this looks kind of pretty interesting. I'd love to make this card. If there are kits left, either through us, our website, karenberniston.com, or from a participating store, it's not like you can't buy a kit at any time and go back and watch the prep work video. And then there'll be a link to this class day video as well. So the fact that it's all on YouTube makes it really easy for you to even do it after the fact. Or let's say, you know, you're watching this live and you're crafting along with me and you get a little behind because you got a phone call or something happened. You can always go back and catch up on your own time later uh, by just watching the YouTube video. Uh, so the die cutting that you did were part of the four required dies for this class. So in order to participate in this class, you have to have these four dies. So it's our word set seven autumn, our autumn elements. That's where all the fun leaves and pumpkins and acorns and stuff came from. Our feathered animals. We're going to do, be doing a turkey and an owl. And then our border blends party. And that's where these little borders came from on the card. Okay, so those are your required dies. And then anything else that we use to complete the card, like you'll see here this little crosshatch rectangle in the back here, and you see this crosshatch oval right here, and then of course the mechanism itself, those were pre-cut. So those are just in the kit that you would purchase from the store or from us. The pieces you would need to do those parts are pre-cut for you since they are not part of the required dies. But I do list anything that we have pre-cut for you. I will list the item numbers here on the supply list so that if you end up just absolutely loving this card and wanting to make a bunch more, you know, you can pick up those extra dies that you would need. So photo collage, that is what we're using tonight for the mechanism. Uh, the, the We didn't need much because we're going to put all those other pieces on it. We're not going to do photo frames and things, but these pieces were cut for you as pre-cuts. And that die set makes a cool collage of photos that comes with all those little photo frames and things. But you can also use just the mechanism and then substitute it out and decorate it with items as well. So that's that's what we're gonna do tonight. Okay, what do you need for tools tonight? For tools tonight, you're basically gonna need your scissors and some glue, something able to do like a fine line of glue. Um, my favorite is my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive. I keep it in my fine tip bottle and then in a damp paper towel in a jar. And that just keeps the glue flowing um, throughout my crafting session. So that works great. And then because we have so many little pieces, I am going to recommend that you grab like a, a paper plate or something to capture all your pieces because there are a lot of them. And uh, as you know, as you did the prep work on it, the prep work took a little time, but um, you know, worth it, worth it for this fun card. Uh, okay, so we are going to dive in. We've got a couple hours to go here to get this thing done. So let's go ahead and start diving in. All right, so we're going to do our main card. So what you're looking for out of the pieces that you put together, oops, not ready for Apple yet, is your 5 by 7 card that you cut and scored out of the tangy orange cardstock. 
And we're gonna go ahead and focus here on the inside of this card. Let's see. Put this open where you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so we're gonna start by just putting our background pieces in. So we're using lovely photo play, double-sided papers. You know, this is your card, not my card. If you have a different vision and you wanna flip your paper over or wanna, you know, you do as you please. But if you want it to match mine, and by mine I mean Tanya's, because she's the one who designed this class, business partner, is uh, you'll wanna glue those in with the orange side up. Now you could use a tape runner if you prefer. This is just paper to paper. Um, so tape runner works. I just, I just end up using my glue for everything. All right, and I don't think there's an up and down to that, but if there were, I guess it would be, you could look on the back and see which way the leaves are falling. What I like to do, I mean, this is basically the size to center in the panel, but what I like to do is I just look at this edge, this edge, and this edge, and I make sure those are pretty even, and that might make it a little close to the fold over here, but that's fine, because, you know, I just worry about these outside edges, trying to make sure that those are pretty even. the background of our card. One thing about photo collage cards is they really do work the best if the card itself has um, is rigid, you know, has some, some uh, thickness to it and uh, doesn't warp or bend too much. So in this case, we're using a 100-pound cardstock and then a nice double-sided pattern paper um, on three sides. And so then it's just, it's just a nice solid card and it operates just beautifully. Um, if you've ever made a photo collage and you feel like you you know, doesn't fold as nice as you want it to, it could be that your card itself is a little weak and you could just go ahead and maybe add a pattern, a panel of cardstock, you know, to the back or something to, to make it stronger. Alrighty, then the next pieces we're going to put in are going to be those smaller pieces of the photo play paper. I don't remember the name of this one, but um, if you cut it like mine, if you followed the prep work video and you cut it like mine, then there is a way that the pattern lines up. Like for me, I can see it's here that the pattern goes right through. So if that's something that you like, that the pattern continues from side to side, then just arrange them so that it does. You want to have this relatively close to the bottom. Let me show you on this one. We're going to put a border and you might want to see a little bit of orange, but what we don't want to do is create any kind of catch point with this raised border as our pop-up comes down. So see how this one slides along and comes to rest near the fold. We wanna make sure that is all up above in this flat area. So we wanna keep these decorator pieces pretty low. So you don't, you don't get a lot of creative choice on that one or else you'll have to deal with catch points. So I would say, you don't have to get a ruler out or anything, but I would say just leave yourself, what does that look like? Maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Something like this. Okay, and put the other one on the other side. And I'm just using the first side to kind of get my my height the same would not have to be absolutely perfect because we're putting borders on anyway. All right, let's talk about those borders. So had you cut nine of them, and we're gonna use four here on the inside of the card, okay? And our border blend sets, those are really fun. Like we talked about it in the prep work video if you watched it. But basically the way border blends, and there's three different styles um, of border blends. We're using party, but there's also argyle and trims. And so they cut some really pretty positive space borders. So you can see we're using this one right here. And then this, we also used this one, uh, which does the, um, the swag borders. 
and the twig. Okay, so in a positive space, they cut some great borders, but then you see how they have these little notches and slots. You can put those two dies together, tape them together temporarily, and then you get a new border cut in the space between, and you can flip each one around and try different combinations. So from these three dies, by putting them together and cutting them, you can get all these different styles and more. This is just how many I could fit. And you can kind of see that, you know, if this is die one, die two, die three, this one is made with a one, three combination, you know, and this one's made with butting one up next to two and cutting it at the same time, you know, so you can make all sorts of really cool border. So it really, really extends the versatility of that die set to be able to do it that way. Okay, I think what I'm going to do here with my border is it's a little long, but I'm just going to go ahead and put my glue, maybe stop, you know, one short or so. And then I'm just going to get it right on the edge of that paper. And when I get out here, to the edge, I'll just trim it kind of as I go. All right, and then we're just going to do that three more times. Now, if you want to see how much I cut off, it's the, you know, the half and the full and then a little diamond as well. So, but I don't usually do it ahead of time. You know, I mean, you want to, you want to uh, be able to adjust if one section's a little longer, or whatever. Okay, put this one down here. I'm just looking at the little tiny diamonds that are in between each oval and basically having those go right on the seam of the paper. It needs to be a, an easy way to line it up. So we do these spotlight workshops once a quarter with Stampin' Scrapbook Expo. And uh, our next one will be in December. That one actually, we're going to do it on a Saturday. It's gonna be when the class debuts. But again, it's all YouTube, so you don't have to be available right when the class goes up because you just get the link and you can watch it, you know, do your projects whenever you have time. Um, but we did four of these, or we're doing four of these these years. So we did uh, spotlights in March, or maybe it was April. I can't remember. In June, and then September, and then we'll do December. Okay. So there's my background. Now, I made mention of the fact that we... Um, want to make sure that our photo collage is placed high enough so that when we build this collage, we don't create catch points with these borders, all right? So I figured out what that measurement was and I put it in your handout that if you will, it says here, measure two inches from the top of the card and place a mark at the center fold, okay? So that way we can uh, know where to place our, uh, our photo collage mechanism. So if you have a ruler, which I didn't tell you to get out, so hopefully you got handy, handy can grab a ruler. You would like to measure down from the scent from the top of the card two inches and just put a little mark. That could be pencil, that could be pen. You're not gonna see it. You can see it's way down under there. I don't think there's any way for you to see your pencil line after the card's put together. So it can absolutely be pen. And just give yourself a little mark and that'll help us with the photo collage. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this photo collage mechanism working inside this card, and then we're gonna set the card aside and we're gonna start uh, uh, assembling all our little, you know, acorns and apples and owls and turkeys and things like that and get those ready to go, and then we'll start building on the collage. So that's gonna be the order of things. So what you are looking for out of your pre-cut baggie is your photo collage mechanisms. Okay, so what we did, and we asked the stores to do this as well if they made the kits, is we're only going to use one set, so we need one mechanism and four arms, but we asked them and us to cut you a second one just so that you have another one 
you know, if something happens with this one, then you can still make your card um, or otherwise you have one for your next project. Okay, so get you started with your next project because you have so many leftovers that you will absolutely have enough to do another thing. All right, we do assembly videos on every single one of our dies. So there's a really great uh, tips and tricks video about the photo collage. And the best way to find assembly videos on our YouTube channel is to actually take whatever die that you have and just go to karenberniston.com. And then you're looking for whatever the item is. So like in this case, it's item 1098, the photo collage pop-up. Just put that in the search bar. Put You can put the item number. You can put a little bit of the name. You don't even have to type out the whole thing. You can put in photo, you know. And then it's going to come up with some options and you click on the one that you want, photo collage. And right there on the product page are going to be the videos for how you assemble it um, right there on the product page. They're also on our YouTube channel. You can absolutely just go look at the playlist on the YouTube channel that has all of the die sets. But the easiest way to get to them is to start from our website, karenberniston.com, and then just use the search bar. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Sorry, I had to see if I had a pencil. I do, I have a pencil. So on mine, not necessarily on yours, but on mine, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in the score lines so you can see them a little better where they are. Now, I love a strong cardstock for this piece. This is the base of the photo collage. And, um, you know, it's gonna be opening and closing and spinning and all that stuff. And people are gonna have a lot of fun playing with this card. And it's just gonna hold up better if you use a nice strong cardstock. So I like a 100, 110 pound, you know, like a heavy weight cardstock smooth for this. Okay, then it's not as important that the arms are the same weight, but if you do use the heavier weight cardstock for your arms as well, it you know, the collage itself won't have as much bounce to it. It'll be a little more solid. So, um, but that's that's just personal preference, whether these are cut out of, it's not as functional that these be cut out of the 100 pound, but this one, you definitely want it to be cut out of the 100 pound. The other thing is so that both of our, all of our photo collages spin the same way, you know, it's in a class, you know, I mean, it's not like you couldn't flip it over and do it this way and have it spin instead of spinning this way, it would spin counterclockwise. But then I don't, you know, we've already worked out, Tanya's already worked out where all these pieces can go and not create catch points and it works so wonderfully. So we definitely want us all to be starting from the piece the same way. And so as you're looking at it, um, you know, you should see your little uh, notch will be on upper left and lower right. So if you're looking at yours and you're like, oh, it's upper right and lower left, and it kind of looks like the back of the piece, you know, not the piece that was die cut into, just flip that over. And we're going to use it with this side up. Okay, and you can always tell little rounded edges and things. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find this diagonal fold, or this, it doesn't matter which diagonal fold. We're going to find the diagonal folds by folding them as valley folds, which means that you're folding, you know, towards yourself and back out. Now, I'm not going to go back and forth and back. I'm not trying to make this a super loose fold or anything. I'm just trying to find it, okay? So just no, no getting the bone folder out and all that. Just a valley fold on the diagonal and back out again. And then we're going to do the other diagonal, valley fold, meaning you're looking into the valley and back out again. All right, so we did di diagonals, we did as valley folds, all right? These little folds here up the middle, we're gonna do those as a mountain. And see what I'm doing is I'm just pressing here so that this comes up and that comes up. So in other words, the fold doesn't go all the way through both sides, it's just from here to here. So we're gonna do that as a mountain fold, okay? And then back up again. All right, this little fold and this little fold are both going to be valley folds, meaning because eventually, not yet, but eventually those notches are going to go together, but not yet. Okay, so we've got valley, 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 mountain. All right, now here's what we wanna do. We wanna get those mountains coming up into the piece. So if I were to fold it down, it'll collapse up into a little piece like that. Okay, so let's do that again, all right? So I, on the sides here, I just kind of go to the corners and we've already trained this as a valley, this is a valley, and this is a mountain, so it should want to do this for you pretty easily, okay? And then you'll see it collapses down like that. Okay, so that that's the how it works there. So you have those little opposite mountains, okay? 
All right, now before we put this in the card, and this is something you can do with a pen or a pencil, doesn't matter because um, we're gonna cover it up. You see how there's four dots? So there's a dot here, a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. It's probably easier for you to see on yours. Okay, that little press dot or whatever. Those are to help you place the arm. So if you just start at a dot and draw an arrow out, you know what, let me see if I can find a lighter. No, I'm using such a, um, oh goodness. I'm using such a dark cardstock that I feel like it's probably not showing up very well. Let me see. Let me see if a white gel pen will work. Oop, this one's not working. That's the only thing about gel pens is they can be a little finicky. Is this one working? Great, okay. So I'm going to, for each one, I'm gonna put a little dot on the dot and then draw an arrow out from the dot, okay? So dot on the dot and then arrow outward, dot on the dot and arrow outward. So now see, I've got arrows going up, left, down, right. So I've got arrows going in all four different directions. And those are going to have us be able to place these. Um, see, it's going to get covered up. That's why I said it doesn't matter what you do it out of. We're going to glue those arms to cover up those arrows. Okay. And those are going to be the four arms that stick out and rotate and hold our collage. All right, let's see. So you have a choice. I think the way I wrote the instructions, I said, okay, well, let's get this base put in and then we'll put the arms on, but it's just as easy to do it first. So why don't we just do that first? Find a piece of white paper. Okay, I'm sure you can see me here. All right, so you've got your four arms. So just like with the... Uh, you know, start at the dot and go outward with the pen, you can do the same thing with the uh, glue, okay? I'm just gonna cover up the arrow, and then I'm going to grab one of the arms, and I'm gonna look at the taper, and the taper should match that. If it doesn't, I can either flip it over, or if you really want it to be the way it was die cut, you know what I mean, with the pretty side up, then find one that has the taper going the right way. And you just want that taper to line up with this edge, cover the dot and the arrow, and shoot straight out the direction the arrow was pointing. And in the case of these ones that are below the notch, I just kind of center it in the area. So see there's a little bit lower than the notch and a little bit up from the fold, okay? All right, then I'm gonna go to the next one and I'm gonna add some glue over my arrow. And then I'm gonna grab one of those arms and I'm going to, this time it's gonna line up with that fold and stick up the top. And I just needed to make sure that I went underneath this section versus going over it because then I you know, wouldn't be able to fold this out of the way later. So just snake it in there, get it. It doesn't have to be so butted into the fold that it causes a problem. It can be up from the fold a little bit, but basically the, the fold will help you get it straight. So I've got one arm going this way, one arm going this way, I made sure that this arm is not in front of this section, but actually behind it so that this can fold this way later. Okay, then if you want to, you can just turn the entire piece around and it looks identical to what you just did. One goes this way, one goes that way. So you add your adhesive here. Okay, grab an arm, make sure the taper lines up, that it's sticking out straight that you're pretty well centered between the two folds. Okay. And then the last one, adhesive here. We're gonna take that arm, make sure we get underneath this section. Glue it here. Again, it can be up a little bit from the fold. It doesn't have to be so crammed down in there that it could, you know, bunch or cause problems. And now we have, basically, when you fold it up, like a little robot. See, a little robot. Put a little. See, it's a robot. The only reason I'm, you don't have to draw a robot face on yours. The only reason I'm drawing the robot face is because I've found it helps with people on the photo collage. When you glue this into the card, 
you're actually not looking to have glue completely covering this whole thing. The photo collage loves to have a little give. So what do I mean by that? Let me see if I can show you there. Can you see how this edge loves to lift up a little bit so that it really assists the twist and then the same thing with this edge over here. So when you're gluing these down, we're just gonna kind of keep the adhesive to the to the middle, kind of to the robot faces and um, leave some room for that to have some lift to it. All right, so what do I mean by that? Here's what we do. You've got your piece, you've got the four arms attached, you've got a hole in the middle and you can look down and see the hole I mean the hole, the um, mark that you made in your card. And we are going to glue down just this left side. So we're not gluing this side down yet. We're just gluing this side down, okay? So I'm gonna turn that over. And there's no uh, up or downs. People ask me that all the time. They're like, how do I know if I'm right side up? Okay, this is exactly the same as this. The main thing is, is that your two flat areas go on either side of the fold. So that mountain that goes up the middle, that fold, lines up with the fold of the card. In other words, you can't do it like this. It doesn't work. Okay, you gotta do it like this, all right? Okay, so we're gonna do just this side over here. So I'm gonna turn that over and I'm gonna add my adhesive and I'm just gonna pretty much stick in the middle here, kind of robot face. See, I'm just leaving the edges uncoated with adhesive so that they can have the ability to lift up, okay? Now I'm going to line up that photo collage mechanism right over the fold of the card and I'm looking through the hole in the middle that I see my little pen mark that I made at two inches down, okay? So I really would like this straight, this mountain straight over the fold of the card as best I can get it, okay? Straight is the best. All right, now, the reason I didn't glue this side down yet is because these two notches have to slide together. And it's really difficult to do that if you've glued both sides of your base down. It's much easier to do that if only one side is, is um, glued down because then this side lifts all the way up like this and it makes it really easy to get those notches together, slide them together all the way until they stop. Then I can glue this side down. Okay, see how that's gonna work? Let's just do that again, make sure that you see that. I'll take that apart again, show that, that again. Okay, so we've glued this side down, just kind of in the middle here. Okay, we've not glued this side down. Now we're going to get those two notches together and slide them until they stop. Then that'll give us the position where we can glue this one down. Now you might find it difficult, like, well, how do I get in there with my adhesive? You just back fold your card like this, and then see, you can see your robot face. I can put the adhesive kind of in this center section covering the robot face, but leaving it away from the edges, okay? And then what's important is that we make sure those notches stay completely together as we press this side down, okay? So these, these have to be completely together. Okay, moment of truth. Now, if you've just really mashed this down in the process of getting it on there, then it may need a little training the first time, okay? So before you start closing your card in case it's not lifting up or one of them staying on the ground or something like that, take your fingers along the fold of the card underneath there, see? And we're just going to lift those mountains back up again so that it remembers that there's mountain folds there. And then you should be able to close your card just fine. Give it a good squish. And there's your mechanism. And I mean, look at how generic that is. That could be anything. You can really see how much it loves to be able to lift up a little bit here and here as it twists. So as long as these are glued down in the center, then it's fine that that's lifting. In fact, it works better if that's lifting up a little bit. This is lifting up a little bit right here. It seems really, that's its favorite. That's its favorite. It loves that. Okay, well done. You've done all the hard part of class already. Already. You're only a half an hour in and you've already uh, 
done all the hard parts of class. Okay, now we get to do the fun parts of class, which are to decorate this. All right. I know it's fun to play with, isn't it? Okay, let's look at our card here. Let's do a little bit of some assembly and then we'll have all of our pieces ready and then we'll just start having fun making our collage. Okay, let's switch to doing the pieces from our feathered animals. Okay, so let's talk about that die set. Feathered animals, let me find it. That was one of your required dies, so you got to cut those. So you can make a turkey, an owl, or an ostrich with this set. It comes with all those pieces. There's a couple different owls on the front just because it's showing you that you have different styling tips. So you have a little brow piece that you can put on the owl. You have some glasses that you can put on the owl, or you can do a more plain owl like we're going to do tonight. All right, so what we had you do during prep work was to die cut, see if we can find it, your owl, and to use some brown ink through the die as a stencil to add the feathers on at that time. Okay, so you're looking for that piece. You are also looking for that white oval. So that white oval is what backs the owl's head so that the eyeballs are filled in. Oh, you are gonna need the little black eyeballs as well. Oh, I just found a turkey head. I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna grab the pieces as I see them. Here's some legs. Okay, what else do we have in here? It gets easier as you go because you get fewer and fewer pieces. There's a turkey. Here's a turkey piece. Here's a turkey piece. Okay, I'm still looking for that white oval. I'm sure some of you probably are seeing it on the camera going, oh, Karen, it's right there. Did I have a white? There it is. Uh, okay, did I find everything? No, beaks. I think I found everything. Okay. I don't know for sure that those are, this might be better on the gray. You can see. All right, let's start with the owl. So with the owl, what you do is you glue the white um, oval behind the holes of the owl's head. Okay. So the easiest way to do that is to flip the owl over and add the adhesive just around those eye sockets like that. Okay. Then you can just from the top kind of go in there until the white is completely in the opening. Okay. There it is back there. All right. Then with our little self-adhesive eyeballs, one thing you can do, it's optional, but uh, a nice way to, you know, make the characters look a little more alive, I guess, so to speak, is to put a catch light in with a white gel pen. So that's just a little dot somewhere, not in the center usually, you know, like up on an edge or something. And then when you go to put those little stickers in on your owl, just have the catch lights be in the same spot for both sides. Now it's up to you where those eyeballs go, whether your eye, your uh, owl is looking down, looking to the right, right in the center. You know, that's completely up to you. Okay, I'm just gonna center them. Okay, cutie patootie. All right, so on the Beaks, I also had you put double-sided adhesive on the back so that these would be stickers. So the smile beak, the bigger one, is for the turkey. The triangle beak is for the owl. And the other little piece is actually the snood. So uh, the snood is that little piece, sorry, that goes kind of over the top of the beak. It's very optional for the turkey. In fact, on Tanya's original, um, she did not use the snood. You can see that in your handout. So that is completely up to you if you do want to use the snoot or you don't. Since it's the exact same color as the beak, you could take mm, any kind of red pen. Let's see if I can find something handy here. Like a red, a red Copic would work great or just, you know, red Sharpie or anything like that. And if you color in the snood, then it'll be a little darker than the beak. And you can kind of try it and see if you like it or not. Okay, sticking with our owl, we're gonna do the triangle beak for the owl. And you, 
if your ink went through the stencil, then you already kind of know where to put it because you've got a little, some brown ink there to cover. Something like that. Point it down. One of the things that was uh, asked you to have in class would be like some brown ink, if you like that look, and maybe a blending tool or a makeup sponge. And then if you want to, you could go around and add a little ink to the edges of our little owl. Okay. And then with the legs, it, you use the same legs, whether you're making an owl, a turkey, or an ostrich, and that's why they're so tall, because if you're doing an ostrich, then it has, um, you know, tall legs. And you, I mean, you can make a tall-legged owl if you want to, but usually the owl's legs would be much shorter, so then you would just add your glue and have a little, however much leg you want showing on your owl. I like that, a oh, little cutie. I realized we're missing a turkey body. So that's brown. Let me go into my pieces and find it. It's this one. All right, so now let's do our turkey. So here's the turkey that we're gonna make for our bonus tag. So what we want for this one is we're gonna use the turkey head. Once again, it's got a tall neck in case you're doing an ostrich. But since we are doing a turkey, you can add the glue over most of that neck. And then it's up to you as to whether you would like your turkey to have the head tilt, or if you want your turkey to have a more straight on head, you can move the body. It doesn't matter, you know, the, 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 which, what do you want? Do you want it to have a straight head or do you want it to have a little bit of a tilt or a lot of tilt or whatever? It's just whatever angle you put that piece to the body on. So see, it can go crooked on the back, it doesn't matter. All righty. And the way we did these eyes is with the stencil feature on the die. So that is one thing about our animal dies. If you're new to our animal dies, they're small, you know, and so wherever possible, we'll use like a stencil feature to keep you from having to, you know, glue too many tiny little pieces on. There's still plenty of tiny little pieces in this set, but not as many as if you also had to, you know, glue on some eyes. All right, so the turkey usually gets the smile beak. So that's the one that has the smile built in. You would use that one for the ostrich as well. And then here's where you can decide it looks adorable with or without the, the snood. If you want the snood, it's usually the small end that goes on top and then it just kind of hangs over the side of the, the beak. Once again, maybe a little ink around the edges or sometimes like a little pink colored pencil for cheeks. That looks cute too. All right, one thing that Tanya did on hers, I noticed in the pictures that she sent me, is this is completely optional, but it cuts the line for the feathers or the wings. And sometimes if you're using a dark color like brown, maybe having those be a little highlighted with a pen. I'm just using a black pen, going in and highlighting those lines. Again, completely optional. So your turkey, you decide. Once again, we're not going to show too much leg because we're doing a turkey, not an ostrich. So just a little leg sticking out the bottom. Okay. All right, he's coming together. All right, so then for the turkey feathers, we did this gorgeous glitter paper. And then there is a turkey feathers trim piece that we cut out of the red. And I'm going to glue that on. And you'll see that it just the, you know, the contours match up and you just start it where it, it reaches the bottom. It's re re very easy to place this. Okay. All right. And then how far up your turkey goes on the feathers is absolutely completely your choice. Okay. There's no right or wrong to that. It's just where you think the turkey feathers should go. So I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna use a lot of adhesive behind the head because it's gonna stick up higher a little bit than the feathers, but uh, something like this, I guess. I guess most of my head did actually end up hitting the feathers, so I could definitely have used some glue behind there. The other thing too, when you're gluing to glitter like this, oh, see, it's already sliding. 
Yeah, you have to be patient because it's going to take a second for the glue to set up with the glitter. And sometimes I'll do things like add clips, you know, little quilting clips or something if I'm gluing to glitter. You know, to give it a chance to set up. And then this is just an optional styling tip. Let me show you how it looks. But on the packaging, I did it um, as well. Is you can take another little... Uh, turkey feather trim piece of a lighter color and then you can just trim one of the scallops off one end or the other okay and then you can use that as a little collar on the turkey it just gives a little finishing touch so if you like that look there we go a little glue right here and that little collar piece And you know, the animals are just, they're cute and um, they don't require coloring, although they do look good. If you're a Copic colorer, um, it also looks really cool to style these with Copics, but you know, some people are not into the coloring. And so we like our little animals because it gives you the chance to make, you know, decorator pieces like this and not have to, you know, be a stamper and a colorer to be able to get some really cute little characters. Okay, while we are in the business of assembling things, let's go ahead then and assemble our acorns. So you should have, I think there's five. So there should be two that are the gold mirror card and then three that are the sparkly uh, desert sand. And then all of the acorn tops are that bronze chunky glitter. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Once again, gluing to glitter. So um, glitter and mirror cardstock. So it's going to take a second to set up. So and this is also a good spot to use my quick stick. Nope. I didn't. Uh, didn't let those go. Okay. I'm just gonna. pinch them until they set up. So all of these uh, card stocks that we're using in the kit and the specialty papers, the glitters um, and the mirror card stock, they all come from the paper cut. So that is a company that we work with um, for our exact packs. We offer their 100 pound smooth card stock in a variety of colors, six by six packs on our website, mostly for use with our ball dies, but um, you know, they can be used for anything. And in fact, we have one that's some of our favorite specialties. So we end up using so much of these specialty, you know, mirror cards and Mary Sparkles and in our class kits um, that you can now go get an exact pack on our website that is just six by six pieces of some of our favorite, you know, mirror card stocks and favorite colors of mirror sparkle and stuff and yeah it just makes it a little bit more economical than when you have to go buy but like big 12 by 12 sheets of specialty card stocks which are more expensive you know um when you use so little of it you know it takes so little to get a a big effect so you can check that out on our website if you like that some of the dyes really work well with some of those mirror card stocks, you know, if you're doing a mailbox or a street lantern or something like that. All right, I have my acorns assembled. What else can we assemble before we start doing our thing here? Oh, we can do apples. Okay, so in your prep work, you were told to cut, I think we did two, didn't we do two apples out of red and two apples out of green or did I make that up was it just one well I could check my hand out hang on let's see here I can't remember two apples yeah we should have two red apples 
and two green apples. Okay, I found my other red one. One nice thing about me having to dig through all these pieces for every piece is I hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. Um, so with it being on YouTube, I don't get the benefit of my students saying, slow down, you're going too fast. But at least you do have the control on the replay. You'll be able to pause me. All right, so all we are going to do with the green ones is use the stem and the leaf to glue to the red ones to change the color. So you just take your scissors, cut out the stem and leaf from the green ones, and then we'll glue those to the red, and then we're not going to use the, the green apples at all. And I mean, this is just why I love glue for stuff like this, because, you know, as you can imagine, trying to do this kind of stuff with tape or tape runner um, it could be frustrating, but glue, especially dries clear glue, so I'm a little bit messy. Yeah, and I think those apples would also benefit from a little brown ink around the edges for some dimension. Oh, I'm using vintage photo, but it, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter what brown ink you use, whatever you have that you like. And I know some people prefer blending brushes, which would be fine as well if you have brushes instead of sponges. I just like these sponge tools because, you know, it stores the, the little sponge tool in the bottom of the, the little cube. So I love that. Okay, I think that is everything that we need to assemble um, before we can start working on our collage. Yeah. All righty, so keep your ink handy because I think we're gonna brush edges of all of the leaves as well and pumpkins and things. All right, so let's move these little guys out of the way. What I like to do with photo collages, this is just my personal preference, but maybe follow along with me for this one just because we, you know, Tanya did work out how not to have catch points and things like this. So, you know, if you try and do the same general order and placement as the original, then you know for sure that you're not gonna be frustrated by things catching. You can see how nicely, even though that's a very elaborate collage, how nicely it all folds down. Okay, so what I did is I started with this big clump right here, okay? And to do that, I started with a pumpkin. So um, maybe a little ink around the edges of your pumpkins. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue that pumpkin to this upper ledge right here in the center. So let's see if I'll put a little piece of white paper behind that. You can see. See that little lip right there? That's where we're gonna build this whole little owl scene for our card. And we're just gonna start with a pumpkin. So I only want the adhesive where the pumpkin's gonna cover it. I don't wanna just sit there and just put it all over the back of the pumpkin because I don't want stray adhesive on a pop-up. So I'm gonna add my adhesive just to that lip. Now, here's what I wanna do. When I glue this pumpkin on, see how I'm gonna put my finger behind there and I'm gonna try and pinch it just to that little thing versus mashing it down like this. Cause I don't really like to mash a photo collage. It's working so nicely now. I would just rather pinch it to where it attaches. And then, and I came up a little bit from the fold, you know, not mash it into the fold. And then after every piece that you add, just open and close the card a couple times and make sure there's no catch point. But there isn't gonna be a catch point with your first item, um, unless you happen to get it down into a fold or something. Um, okay, so there's our pumpkin. So that's gonna be our anchoring piece for this upper kind of collage that we're going to create. All right, 
hanging over here off this right side of the pumpkin, we're going to add an apple. And my suggestion would be to make sure that the leaf hits the apple as well. I mean, I'm sorry, the leaf hits the pumpkin as well so that it's just not out here over air where that could really easily kind of become weak over time. And then just keep it above the fold. So I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna say, all right, I want it right there. So the adhesive should go on the back of the leaf and this side of the apple. Okay, not much more than that. And then once again, I'm going to pinch it to my pumpkin. I'm not going to just mash it down onto the card. So I'm really, you know, just trying to keep my pop-up elevated as I do it. And then I check it. The nice thing about using glue is that you can move things if you create catch points, if you work quickly. So I definitely suggest glue um, for working on photo collages. All right, now we're going to put our owl on. And the owl's gonna go over here on the left side of the pumpkin and it can go at a cute angle or however. I might once again suggest that you try to keep the, the leg partially attached to the pop-up. So I've got a toe hanging off, but not a whole leg. Okay, so if I just keep it where the leg itself is kind of on the green, then, um, you know, it'll be more secure. I won't have to worry about breaking my owl's leg. Um, okay, so I've got a good spot there. So I'm gonna add some adhesive on that leg, but not the toe that's out. This whole leg is gonna get glued down. Okay, this side. I can always kind of go in there with my needle tip and add more glue if I need to. Looks like I could put some here, but basically this kind of whole side of the owl. Once again, I'm going in there and I'm pinching to my finger. I'm putting the pressure, pinching to my finger, not mashing down. I don't think I probably have to say that after every time. And then I check it and I see if my sweet little owl, and now we have three pieces on our collage and it's working wonderfully. All right, now we're gonna get into some leaves and vines. Now you do not have to match the same colors that I did. I mean, or really even the same shape as long as you're just willing to check it every time. Um, but I'm going to just follow mine because uh, I knew that worked. <laughs> so then I don't, have to, I don't have to rethink it. I don't have to have a, um, a thing. Uh, looking at the, there's, Two different maple leaves are the one that was out of the light basis brown and one out of the safety orange. And I'm gonna do the safety orange, the little bit uh, darker one there for this. Once again, I'm gonna add some ink around the edges for some dimension. Okay. And where this is going to go is going to be behind the owl, almost kind of creating a crown kind of shape behind the owl there, see? So that means that the adhesive needs to kind of stay in the center and go down the stem. Okay, and then go in and kind of pinch that behind the owl's head. See that? And then check it. Okay, so one thing about photo collages is where it ends up in the open position is different from where it ends up in the closed position. So the thing that we're working on now is going to come to rest over here sideways, see? So what's happening is I'm getting close to the top of my card. And as I add these pieces out here, I have to make sure I put them in such a spot that they stay within the card when the card is closed. So now we're getting into the pieces where maybe I might have to move something just based on where it might land. I'm gonna go with the lighter green vine here. And uh, yours might be even lighter than this. I think there were two different greens on the light green that were used in the kits. So I don't, I don't know which color you got, but the lighter of the two greens. Okay, little ink. And then I'm gonna glue that behind there with some vine sticking out, but I can tell you it's not gonna be too much vine because I've gotta keep it in the card, so. This is one of these ones where we're gonna work quickly. So I'm gonna add some adhesive in the final two um, 
leaves and the stem. And, um, oh, I guess I maybe didn't need it all the way on that leaf, but let's just check it. Okay, so let me just check. Ooh, look, look how close I am, but it is sticking out. So if it's sticking up too high, that means it has to go in more, right? Because of the way it moves or at a different angle or something. So there, I just kept it in. I mean, it's just right on the edge. Actually, I might be able to do it at a different angle and keep it in, let's see. I think I made it worse. I'll just go a little bit further in. There, got it perfect. Okay, so that's what you have to do is you have to just watch your location when you get out close to the edges, okay? And actually this one, this next one, which is going to be our, if you're making it match mine, the orange um, pointy leaf. We're gonna call that the pointy leaf. I don't know what actual tree that comes from. That's not my forte at all. I do not have a green thumb. All right, so this one's big enough that I feel like maybe what we wanna do is actually close the card up a little bit and kinda, of, you know, one thing you can do if you do have a tape runner, do I have a tape runner right here handy? Ooh, that would have been so smart. Yes, I do. Tape runner can be a good way to just add a little dot of adhesive where you can check something. So you can even do this kind of bend back thing and find a spot where that leaf is going to stay in. like something like that. Ooh, it's a little bit at an angle. Let's see. Maybe something like this. Oop, sticking out. Still sticking out. A little bit further in. Perfect. Although on mine, it was sticking out this way. Hang on. Let me see what happens if I go up here. Oh no, it gets really out, out there. Oh yeah, that works. Okay. All right. So I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So I'm going to put adhesive. It's going to be a fair bit of it. It's going to be covered behind there. But I'm going to come out at this angle, check it real quick, go down a little further. Okay. And there it stays in. So that's kind of the, the process with the photo collage is you just check it. Um, and you have to be just willing to move things. And I mean, every photo collage card you make is going to be different because, you know, some little thing about how you arrange something is going to make the placement a little different the next time. You can see this doesn't look exactly like what I did the first time. You know, it is. It just is. All right. And then the last piece as part of our first um, vignette, for lack of a better word, it's going to be one of the darker green vines. And we're going to place that one behind the pumpkin sticking out this way. Okay, and I don't think we have any concerns about getting too close to edges with this one. So I'm just going to do th two, the bottom two leaves in the stem and come out something like this. And let me check. Perfect. Okay, so that is our first little one, two, three, four, five, six, seven piece, uh, seven piece vignette, I guess, on this section right here. And then what I found worked best for me is to start at the top and just go around, you know, in a clockwise fashion, putting things on the collage, okay? Now you can make creative choices, just, you know, you kind of get the idea now that you can put things on, check them, see where they are. Okay, starting up here with this uh, arm, Notice the way it moves. It actually flips the item over and the item has to scrape along behind this stuff right here. So whatever we place on there, in our case, a pumpkin, we wanna have it geared pretty far out on the arm and a little bit more to the right so that it has room to flip over into the closed position. Now, what angle, that's kind of up to you. But what I like to do is just add my adhesive to the arm itself, not on the end. Okay, and then I just take my pumpkin and once again, I'm pinching against my finger and then I'm gonna see if it works and it works great, okay? 
okay? And if it was scraping or something, I could move it a little bit more to the right to give it a little bit more clearance room right there. So see, that's 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 why you just have to be willing to move things. Okay, so pumpkin first. All right, I'm just gonna clean up my area just a little bit. Give everybody, a, those of you who are crafting along with me, give you a second to catch up to where I am. Okay, the next one I've chosen is the pointy leaf that has the, from the pattern paper. Okay, adding a little ink to that. And then that one, I, I'm sticking that one up real nice and high off the back of this pumpkin because in the closed position, it's really not gonna get close, you know, to anything. So, adhesive, you know, something like this. And then let's just go in and and then just check it. Working great. All right, so our right vignette is going to be, we're kind of starting with pumpkins on all of these, right? There's a pumpkin in each of these other than this one. Okay, so we're gonna do pumpkin and then you know leaf, leaf, acorn, and a leaf down here. Um, but what we wanna watch is we wanna keep our whole vignette on this one raised up, you know, not down because of how it slides along the card and into the fold. So we don't want it to cross the fold or else it'll crumple. And we don't want it to hit this border or else it'll catch, okay? So the idea is keep our vignette high up on that arm. Okay, so starting with pumpkin. Push a little ink around it. Okay, and we wanna go high. So maybe something like this. So adhesive on the arm is always the best bet so that I don't have stray adhesive. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep that pumpkin kind of high. How far out is kind of up to you? I, I'm, I, want, I want it to be a little further than the apple, you know? I don't really want it crammed up against the apple too much. So I put a little, little gap between it and the apple and then see it staying um, just close. It's getting close to that border, but it's it's staying away from that border, so it's working fine. Okay. And then along this bottom edge, I used, did I use safety orange? I did. So I used the safety orange oak leaf um, versus the lighter brown one. So again, yours does not have to match mine. Up to you. Okay, do you have to keep this out of the folds when it's in the closed position? Yes, and I don't want it to stick too far out, so I think I'm gonna do something like that, where it mostly stays on the pumpkin. So I'm doing top half, go in something like this. it on there and let's just give it a check. Perfect. Okay. Alrighty, then I did that same oak leaf but out of the green, the darker green. And that uh, up here is fine. So you where let me show you where that's all gonna end up. All everything we're going up this direction. I mean, it's it's actually even, for me, it's crossing the border. <laughs> crossing the border, that sounds funny. But um, but it started so high that it doesn't just scrape along and hit. See, it, it lands on top of the border, um, not scraping along. So it should be fine to do. Um, Okay, so something like this. Look 
here. Maybe about that much adhesive. Coming out at a nice angle. And check it. And it works fine. Then let's see, this looks like safety orange. For the pointy leaf. I know what I think Tanya told me to do is just like have them just brush ink on all of their pumpkins and leaves before you start, which probably would have been smart, but I didn't do it that way. I'm just kind of doing it as I go. So I think we're going to go up like this on this one. Okay, so. And like this, give it a test. Works great. Then one of the glittery acorns, maybe out here. I mean, really kind of wherever you like it. I ended up putting it right here. Might even be cute right down here. Hmm. I leave it to you. Okay, I'm gonna stick with what I did because I know it works. All right, so glittery acorn out here on this edge. And it works fine. Okay, wonderful. All right, next I'm gonna do this bottom edge right here that we haven't done yet. And that one, we're going to use an oak leaf, and I think that's the lighter green. So if you do your lighter green oak leaf, it'll give you a little contrast from the thing. Now we are gonna to have to watch for catch points at this location, I'm pretty sure. All right, I think on this leaf here, we're gonna mostly, uh, you know, put it all along that platform there so it doesn't stick out too far. So adhesive, first three stem in the back. Once again, I really would love to just press that against my finger more so than mashing the pop-up. And then let's see. Yep, that's working fine. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, like see how this edge right here could catch against your pumpkin if it was sticking too far out, then in the closed position, um, it could flick against them. And then what you would have to do is you'd have to lift this up and move it further that way, you know, so that it doesn't, or, you know, adjust the angle so it doesn't, this, this, you, you look at which edge is gonna catch against your pumpkin, mine's not, but let's say this edge was catching against your pumpkin. So you need to move it, right? So we would move this down a little bit or up a little bit and you'd adjust it accordingly, okay? Or another thing you could do would be to add something like an acorn or something in the spot where you can't, you know, you can't let the um, the leaf get behind it anymore. You know, you could always add a piece somewhere. So that's how you kind of deal with catch points is you just get real creative. All right, let's see. Attached then below that is going to be an, I don't know, did I, did I actually brush this one with ink? Well, let's just do it a little bit. This is that pattern paper vine, and I attached that behind that green leaf coming down this way. And like this, sticking out this way. So it looks like this is gonna get covered, this is gonna get covered, and maybe here. Okay. Check that one. I definitely want to check that one because I'm worried about it hitting that leaf. It's getting kind of close. It's not, but you know, things work really well when you first make them and then after you've mashed it down and sent it through the mail, you know, it might, if it's really, really close, then I might consider moving it so that you don't have a, a catch point show up later. Yeah, I like that better. See, it just ends up right in that area. Okay. All right, we're close. We only have two more vignettes to go. Okay. So once again, we're gonna anchor each of our 
little arm vignettes with a pumpkin. Alrighty. Let's see. Probably something like this. Maybe a little further out. Because you've got a vignette over here that's going to... Yeah, so maybe leaving a little bit of arm showing. So something like this perhaps let's see oh that's right this one flips over I forgot okay make sure when you put this one on that the majority of the pumpkin is to the left of the arm because look at what it has to do it has to flip over and into the closed position sorry I thought that was a slider but that's a flipper so see I don't have as much pumpkin over here because that has to clear this way okay. then light green pointy leaf Okay, and that one's shooting out this way. Now let's see. I think it's going to be fine. I don't think there's too much it can catch against on that one. Something like this. Let's check it real Oh, yeah, fine. Looks great. I love it when you put one on and it's like, oh, there's nothing around it for miles. That's like the best. Okay, yep. Safety orange oak leaf. Okay, so we're gonna go over the pumpkin with this one. So I think I'm gonna go three things and get the uh, rest of my, ooh, I went too, gotta go further out. That works. Okay. And then another glittery acorn, which I'm going to use to Cover up my little glue goober that I just made right there. I mean, I even like to do that where I fold it down and kind of give it a good like, ooh, if it was going through the mail kind of press and make sure that I don't, you know, develop a catch point from that. But this is working wonderfully. All righty. Okay, last arm, and this one, it travels up and comes to rest next to the fold. So when we put the pumpkin on, we're going to want not too much of the pumpkin above the arm so that it has room in there to come to rest at the fold, okay? So, and then I think we also have to watch this one too for, um, look, it can't, be too far out because I don't have very much room until the end of the card. So as you can see, pumpkin needs to be in on the arm so that only a small amount of the pumpkin sticks out by, beyond the, the arm this way. So let's check. Oh, I, I went too fast. Hang on. Okay. Make sure it's behind my owl's feet. Ooh, yep, just, ooh, sorry, I don't think I was on camera when I did that. So, let me show you. See, not very much, ooh, I don't even think I can get the angle right on that for you to see, but the pumpkin is barely sticking out behind the arm, or beyond the arm, because of how close that comes to the edge, okay? Now, in future cards, if you didn't want to have to be so concerned about that top edge, just because we put the photo collage high because we we're trying to avoid hitting any of this business down here. And we wanted to have you to have room, you know, you could add a little label here or something where you would write your personal greeting. So um, we purposely put the collage a little high in this one. But if you did not build it with any catch points, meaning you kept everything really flat along here, you could lower your collage mechanism and then it wouldn't be quite as close to the edges as you decorated it. So just things to try, you know, if you end up getting this die set and um, using it a lot, try different, try different things. Um, and then the other thing you can do, I should have said, is let's say, well, no, I have to have the borders. I love the borders or whatever. If it were like, let's say we moved this collage down and as this came down, it was hitting that border. 
you can also do something where you add an embellishment or something over the top of the catch point so that the item starts on your embellishment and then see that would eliminate any catch point if that were hitting the thing so there's all sorts of things you can do if you have catch points on your photo collages um, to rectify it without having to start over. nobody wants to start over no one wants to start nobody likes trashing cards right Okay, maple leaf with words on it is going to be our next one. Okay, and that's going to attach to the bottom of this pumpkin, coming out kind of like this. So adhesive on this top part right here. And let's glue it up behind the pumpkin. Yep, no problem. Okay. I don't really want it to, so I can see it flicking that right there. It makes a noise, and I don't like extra noises, so I'm going to move it out a little bit. So my little, this little corner of the maple leaf was hitting my mechanism right there, making a kind of a noise. I mean, it makes a little noise because it slides against the card, but. Uh, okay, then we have, an, oh, see, we're getting fewer and fewer pieces, which is good. I'm going to do the dark green oak leaf. Okay, and that's going to go back up behind here. Something like this. Oh. I see, I'm glad I work fast with that. Gotta keep that away from the top of the card. There we go. Okay, so it needs to, this, this is a, this is the, the edge. See, that ends up coming up close. I could have gone a little bit further out, but not much. So I'm just gonna leave it. It's good. Okay, and then a last little bit will be an, oh no, not that one. Don't we have one more? Seems like we should have another glitter acorn. What did I do? One, two, one, two. Oh, there we go. Maybe it'll turn up. I've lost my glitter acorn. Nope, oh, there it was. It was hidden under my, my ink. Oh, so sorry. Okay. Glitter acorn. It's going to go in this vignette. Something like that. Right here. And ta da. There we go. One super cool autumn themed collage. Now, could you keep adding to it? Yeah, some places you can, you know, cause you're gonna end up with leftover. Um, this is what I ended up when I made my originals. I'll show you all the leaves and stuff I ended up with leftovers because um, Tanya's instructions were just cut them out of all the colors and then you'll have what you need. And that way you can make, you know, cha changes to choices. Like let's say you would rather have had a blue, brown one there. Um, but this, even after I made that card, I still had all these left over. So could you add more? Yeah, certain spots you could. See, like right here, you could add one because of look at where it comes down. Maybe on this side. You know what I mean? You can look and see where where things are moving and how much space you have. No space to go further out this way on this one, but you could go further out on this one. So you can have something like this coming out there. So yeah, you can keep adding to it, uh, but I'm not going to because I've got something working, so I'm good. Uh, okay, so uh, Tanya's idea was to put three random leaves um, in the background, but again, you gotta watch catch points, so you kinda want them away from your collage a bit. So what I chose was the maple leaf that's in the safety orange. And again, just really paying attention to where everything's moving and making sure that I place that out of the, the zone, outside of the zone where things slide. Somewhere out here. Yep, that's looking fine. What you wanna do with things like this too. So if you're putting things in the background, you may think, oh, well, I could put pop dot under that. I wouldn't. 
uh, because what can happen is something can come down, like say if it was close to this leaf, and it can flick underneath that, you know, that's elevated on the pop dot, um, and it can create a, a flick point, you know. So I just, I keep things flat. Um, I don't live dangerously that way. So that's up to you. But. All right, then I did the oak leaf that has all the words on it. Okay, and that one went out here. Just outside of the slide zone. Here. Okay, and then my choice for over here was the pointy dark green. And I just put it out here somewhere. There you go. Inside of the card, done. Very well done. This is really a fun card. Now you could sign the card right here in this open space, or like I said, if you wanted to add something from your stash, we didn't include it, but if you wanted to add some sort of, you know, label or something, you could put it down in this area to sign the card. All right, let's do the front of the card. So my favorite way to do card fronts is just kind of a simple lead in to the magic that's inside using your leftover materials. And Tanya, kind of, Tanya did a nicer, <laughs> a more elaborate card front than I usually do, but it's really, really pretty. Um, what she did is started with this big piece, that pumpkin-y paper, okay. Now, one thing you can do on this card if you wanted to, well, we'll just glue it on. I say sometimes I'll build my front on the paper and then just glue it on afterwards because then I'm not always, you know, struggling with the card opening. But another thing I can do even is like, you know, if it was something that really bugged you, you could pin it so it stays closed. Now do make sure as you put this paper on that you are decorating the front of the card. So give it a quick open, make sure that you haven't accidentally flipped it over and you're on the back. Oops, sorry, that's my, when I trimmed those borders earlier. Okay, front of the card, yes. And I'm just gonna center this on there. Okay. Then we've got borders to go around the perimeter. Now these are five and a half inch borders and we have a seven inch card. So I had you cut an extra one. So you've got five left. So the, the ones top and bottom are plenty long. The ones to the side are not. So you've got this one extra border that you can just basically cut in half, pull in half-ish, right? Because we're just gonna use it to extend two of these borders to make them longer. And what I would do is maybe trim it, tri trim off this little half, you know, half one so that you're ending at a small diamond. And then add your adhesive to the half and the small diamond. And then you can use that as your matchup point. Let's see, let's see if you can see that. Basically just covered the thing and just extended it out some. So taking off that little half piece. Then like this. Okay, so now I've got these really, really long ones that are longer than I need, and these ones are longer than I need. But once again, I think, what I think is the easiest is you just glue it on there, since they're so small anyway, and just trim it when you get to the edge, you know? And you can decide whether you're going all the way to the edge of the card, I think. What we did, by we I mean Tanya and me copying Tanya, is, you know, it doesn't really, it just comes to the edge of the pattern paper. I mean, mine isn't even really all that straight. Okay, well, straight. Straight's over. Read it, right? Okay. So, oh, you know what? I've got to put that paper on. I'm going to put this long one on, and then I'm going to go put those papers on before I put the rest of the borders on. 
so that the border can go over the top of the other papers. Okay, I'm just gonna tear that off. Okay, I got a little I got a little excited for us almost getting done with this card. Moving on to our tag. That I forgot I need to do this part first. Okay, so what was pre-cut for you in your pre-cuts was a portion of a long slimline size um, crosshatch rectangle. So you'll see one side doesn't have the crosshatch, okay? So the three sides that do have the crosshatch, you want to glue those onto the orange piece so that you have a nice equal border on these three sides, okay? And then we'll trim off the excess at the top. So just looking at the crosshatch edge and getting it where I get a nice border here, here, and here. Okay. Then I can flip it over and use my scissors to trim off the part that hangs over. And so this is even on the edge. And then that's going to glue up here to the top of the pattern paper centered. So you do want to get that on before you put this border on so that the border can go over the top of these papers as well. ahead and put my other long one on first um, and then I'll put my straights you know I mean my shorter ones going along the top and the bottom So the other education uh, opportunity that we have, um, we do the spotlights. These are the YouTube classes. We do these um, four times a year, once a quarter, uh, through Stampin' Scrapbook Expo. And, um, you know, these are like a two-hour class, two, two hours and 15 minutes, two hours, 20 minutes, whatever I can bring it in at. Um, but we also offer in the other months, Zoom classes. So those ones, there is a class time, although the Zooms are recorded. So if you can't make the live class, you can always do it on the replay. Um, but on those ones, of course, you're interacting with me live. And um, they take longer because, first of all, we, we do two full projects. And um, they last as long as they last. They're always on the first Saturday of the month, um, starting at 11 a.m. Central. And um, there have, we try to bring them in like two hours per card. Um, so you're there for four hours, but it's gone long sometimes. So, but people can bail. You can bail and come back and watch the replay later and stuff too. So if you like the idea of Zoom classes, um, we do offer those as well. And those we offer through some of our stores. So you actually purchase your kit through a participating store, not from our website. And then... Um, but it is Zoom, so it's it's live, and you can ask me questions or tell me to slow down, or you can hear my dogs barking and <laughs> my lawn people doing the lawn. Okay, here we go. Okay, I have been known if I really dislike the job that I did on a corner, I have been known to cut between two ovals on this one because it looks like a little bow tie and then go in and put your cute little bow tie like in the corner or something, you know, to make it look a little nicer. So you can do that if you've, um, or whatever you want to put in there, you know, maybe, maybe you're going to put little acorns. You have to cut some more, but maybe you're going to put little acorns in the corners or something if you really didn't like how your borders lined up. It doesn't bug me, but for some people it might. Uh, okay, so our greeting on this one is going to be Happy Autumn. So those you cut out of the word set 
um, seven, and you're looking for happy out of both the gold mirror card and the red. And we're gonna glue the gold one to the red one slightly off diagonally so that you get a little drop shadow, okay? I would probably put the adhesive on the top of the red one. Um, like this. Then I go in with the gold one and just like I said, you're trying to offset it just a little bit diagonally that you end up with a slight little drop shadow. And with that dries clear glue, that'll be forgiving. If um, it comes off, okay, so here's my red autumn. Okay, oops. Once again, I'll put my adhesive on the autumn, the red one. Okay, then I'm going to take my gold one and glue it on with a little, little drop shadow. Ooh, I've got a, I've got a huge drop shadow on my T there. Oh, my T is being very difficult. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Close. Okay, I can live with that. These are kind of fun because you can actually bend them, you know, give them different angles and things if you want to. Uh, okay, but so following Tanya's vision here, let me click my card close so you can see it. Um, she kind of came down, you know, a little bit. I don't know how far that is. That far? <laughs> and glued the happy on. You know what? Do as you please. Do do your greeting however you want to do it. I mean, you could put it on the inside if you wanted to. It'd be cute too with just having the pumpkin scene and then this inside. So as you please. As you please. Okay. Happy. And then autumn. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so this little vignette is just, um, now remember you gotta keep some stuff for your for your tag, um, but you have plenty of leaves, so you really can uh, be pretty creative with making your choices and all that stuff. It doesn't have to match mine. Um, let's see, we wanna work back to forward though, so maybe what you wanna do is wanna build your, um, your scene on your thing and then pick them up and glue them down in the order of, you know, what it's in the back. Like I can see on mine that this maple leaf out of the light brown is in the back. So I'm just gonna glue that one down. Now I did not use any pop dots under any of these cause this is a pretty thick card already. Um, so, uh, oh my gosh, sorry. So I didn't want to add additional, um, you know, bulk to it if you had to mail it. But if you weren't mailing it, you were giving it in person or something, or you don't care about bulk, you could pop dot some of these items. On the front, it doesn't matter. You won't, you won't create any catch points or anything. Okay. This one's going... Well, I didn't brush any ink on it, but I didn't on my original either, so... This one's just going to stay orange. Okay, and it looks like I did one of these vines. Kind of coming up like this. Again, there's nothing super magical about any of this placement, so you really can just have fun with your pieces, however. You want to do them. Okay, and then looks like I did a orange oak leaf. Coming out this way. It's 
kind of all splaying out from where the pumpkin's going to go. Dark green pointy. Dark brown pointy. I'm not going to bother with ink on this because it wouldn't show up anyway. Uh, something like this maybe. And then one of our shiny gold acorns. Here. Okay, look at that. You guys. Project number one done. Well done. So that's a five by seven card. So that will fit in an A7 envelope for mailing. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, send that to card somebody. They're going to be so impressed. So impressed. Okay. Okay, let's make ourselves a bonus tag. So it's going to be three layers on the bottom. And the top part of the tag is going to be this uh, polka dot paper, okay? And you can see that that is a little bit smaller than the teal, which is a little bit smaller than the brown. But we can't just glue them all together because we want to have the shadow for the angled parts too. So uh, Tanya didn't give any particular measurement, so you can decide whether you want to have like a tall angled tag like I did on this one, or maybe you want to have it be a little bit less angled but what you do is you decide what angle you want your tag at so i'll do this one a little bit less angled so you get a choice or how you see it so you just kind of cut a triangle like this right then you take this triangle you flip it over you hold it in this corner and then use it as a template so that you get the same corner out of the other side okay so you know that's up to you i did this one like this one, you can see it's a little, this, this one's a little taller. So what, what do you like? It's up to what you like. Okay, once you've got your first tag cut, then you glue that on to the second one, or the teal one. Okay, we're going to give a little shadow all the way around. Okay. Oops, ooh, crooked, crooked. This is why I do like glue, because you can fix your... All right, then, I mean, I just do this by eye. I just go in and a little bit out of this one. I just, because it's not a very long cut, you know? I don't get my trimmer out or anything. I just do it with my scissors. And I want to leave the same approximate border, you know, on this edge. This one I got a little. Fix that. I mean, no one's going to get out the ruler and be measuring your, your shadows or anything like that. And now this one goes on the brown and you do the same thing. cutting the corner so that I leave a little shadow of brown. Like that. Okay. So anyway, different, different shapes. Now you cut the uh, swag borders out of teal and you know, you have way more than you need. So, you know, feel free if you want to do a double swag. You could even do a double swag up at the top because you have plenty. So, 
that's something. You know what? I'll put a double swag on this one. We did a single swag on this one. We did a double swag on this one. Okay, so what I think is easiest here is going to be to focus on the center. Even if you have a grid, you could put that, kind of have an idea of where, where you want. You're going to leave a little room for your... Um, for your apple and twine at the top. Okay, so maybe something like this. How straight am I? Straight-ish, ish, nope, not, not straight. Kind of, okay. And then I'm just gonna trim the edges like this, okay. And then let's just put the double swag on. Why not? We have the piece. You decide which way you want it, if you want single swag or double swag. Okay, so for this one, we want it, uh, let's see, where's the center? Probably like this. I don't know if I want it touching. I don't think I want it touching. I think I want it down a little bit like this. Okay. Oh, not, not straight. Straight. Straight ish. Okay. Okay, double swag. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so an oval from our Oval's Cross Hatch was pre cut for you. If you wanted a little ink on the edge, you could do that. center here. Kind of choice up to you how far up you want it. Okay, and then we just have all this stuff, all this fun stuff. We've got happy fall. Can I mean, did you not have to match the, you know, placement or location of of what I did. Oh, I wonder where this, oh, the apple's supposed to go at the top. I was like, oh, I have this apple that hasn't been used. Okay, so, oh, we have that really pretty gold mirror card vine too. That's gonna go over here. I'm just gonna kind of lay my stuff out the way I like it and then uh, start gluing it down. So that one would go there. I'm gonna do a light brown on the oak leaf that would go here-ish then turkey okay so looks like we have a dark brown oak leaf something like that a pointy leaf coming out this way pointy leaf in the safety orange coming out this way and then turkey in the middle and I still have all this left over. So maybe, you know, maybe you want another little vine. Oh, that's not, that's not the one. Oh, I already glued that down. Okay, we don't need a vine. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to start gluing things down. Um, oh, and then as far as at the top for the twine, I just realized I didn't get out a piece of twine. I'm not exactly sure what color twine you have, but some kind of twine should be in your kit. That was kind of up to the, the kit makers what they were going to use. But if you just use a hole punch, um, I'm going to use, I think, my crocodile, the bigger hole on my crocodile. Let me get that out. Okay. So once again, if you can kind of, um, oh, I don't want to do that now because I have all this stuff on here. Let me glue this all down. Then then I'll, I'll do that. Okay. So we are basically now just to gluing all of our stuff down. So I'll just tell you a little bit about our company while I'm finishing up this project in case we have any new people this time. So again, I'm Karen Berniston. So I'm the side of the company that works on the product design and kind of the creative stuff where um, designing the dies and uh, working with the design team and education and all that kind of stuff. That's me. And then my business partner, Tanya, who actually designed these projects, um, 
She also owns Riley and Company, which is a stamp and die company with a cute little moose and the very famous Funny Bones line with really super fun sayings. So um, she does both. And our company, KB Riley, which is kind of a combination of me, KB, and her, Riley, um, is based in Topeka, Kansas. So our product ships out of Kansas, but I actually do my side of the company. I actually live in Houston, in Houston area. So I work remotely. And um, anyway, we started the company back in 2017. I had been a licensed artist for many years for a couple different companies, you know, doing pop-up dies and stuff for them. And when those contracts ran out, I, I just kind of was ready to go out on my own. Okay, I've already made a creative choice because on my original, this one was behind the green one. But this time it's going to be over the top. So, and Tanya was looking for another opportunity at that time. And so we just decided to combine together and start our own company. And we are basically a dye company. I mean, we don't, uh, we just basically focus on dyes. My focus is, or my specialty is pop-up dyes, but of course, then we also do all these little cute decorator dyes and stuff as well. And um, I draw them all. I'm, I'm the drawer. I'm the uh, person who designs them all. And uh, the pop-ups are sometimes easier for me to design than even like the decorator dies because my degree is actually in engineering, not in um, art. So it probably takes me longer to draw that turkey <laughs> just to design a whole pop-up, but I have fun. So uh, yeah, that's us. And uh, we're, you know, we have uh, just a few employees. We're pretty... We're in a pretty lean business. We have about mm, 220 dies, different dies, which you can see on our website, which is my name, KarenBerniston.com. And uh, yeah, we have fun. We have a lot of fun. We have a really, really talented design team. And if you're looking for inspiration, with our dies, you should join our Facebook group. So we have a Facebook group called the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps. So you just search for that on Facebook. And, um, you know, you have to answer a couple of questions uh, to make sure that you're a die cutter and not a somebody that wandered in by mistake. But uh, there are people from all over the world posting with our dies and they are very friendly in the peeps. So you can say, oh, I'm really looking for an idea for my, you know, whatever, choose an occasion, or I'm looking for an idea, you know, has anybody made our pop-up ball dies into a unicorn or into a, you know, whatever. And um, peeps are really friendly. They'll, they'll fix you up with all sorts of ideas. Um, and there's rules, you know, you got to post with our stuff. Um, we'll let you use other stuff too, but mainly it has to be, you know, it's a brand, it's a brand group. So you got to be focusing on our brand, but, uh, but it's a really, really fun group. And our design team is in there too, making some awesome stuff. All right, I am ready for a hole in the middle here. Okay, and then I'm gonna tie my twine through. And, uh, now, if you're not much into tags, which, why not, these are cool. But you could also put this on the front of a card so you could see that you've cut, basically got your next card front done. You know, if you wanted to make this card again, look at how cute that would be on the front. So if that tag is not, you know, your thing, you kind of basically have another card front if you need it. And then I just went ahead and glued, I wasn't actually sure how Tanya did it. I just saw on her photo that she had a cute little apple on the top of the twine and I was like, well, I'll just try it with glue. And it seemed to work. So I'm just going to do that again. Glue that on. All right, we did it. We did it. I am, I'm not exactly sure how we did on time because I had to stop the camera at one point when I was uh, missing a piece of paper and go find it. So then it started my time over. But I think we kind of hit it. Actually, we did really well and there's even 10 whole minutes left. And so I thought I would just take a few of those minutes and show a little bit more inspiration using that photo collage pop-up. So different ideas. Now, this one that I showed earlier, every single spot is 
put with photos. And to get those little small photos, there's actually a video on the photo collage product page on our website that shows you how you can do, if you're in the United States, you can do those little collage prints at Walgreens and then get these perfect sizes to fit your photo collage. Um, or of course you can do photo editing yourself, you know, through a program. But you know, you can either fill every spot with photos or maybe you're gonna do one where you fill just maybe one spot with photos and do embellishments in the rest, or you could even do all embellishments. So this one's done in a garden theme with some of our charms, or, I mean, these ones are just patterned paper put in there, so you can really, you know, you're choosing your card size, your smallest card size to do a eight photo collage would be an A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half, but you can always go bigger. And then here's one that I had done Again, just filling all the spots with our cute little charms and things. And you can see it's just so generic, you can make it in any theme. So that's the photo collage. If that's something that's on your wish list, those are some more ideas for that. Now for more autumn inspiration, including some of those dyes that you own because you took this class. So the autumn blessings here is from that same word set that we use. Now some of these other pieces are from some of our other sets, but this is a cute little autumn slim, slim line card front. This one's not a pop-up, just a card front made by Fran. And then here's another card by Fran, this time using those autumn elements that we used in class today. See the acorns and the pumpkins and just arranging all the vines and everything into a wreath shape and putting our thank you die in the middle. I just think that's gorgeous. Beautiful. Again, by Fran. Uh, here's one. I think this one's by Sandy. Yeah. And so she's got Happy Thanksgiving on the front. So that's from that same word set, the pumpkins from the autumn elements that we use today. This is our tree and some of our long nature edges here. But she did real kind of clever here. She took our woven basket box card die that's usually a standalone die that you just make and collapse and mail. And she used an edge to pull it open into a card. And then she filled it with this little turkeys and it says, eat pizza. Oh my goodness, so cute. Our tree die here used and then some of our edges. That's a card by Sandy. Now that same tree that you'll see that tree show up a lot on our, our this one, I. I think the only thing I used on this one that's that we used in class today would be the Welcome Autumn, but just to kind of give more fall ideas. So this one is our house pivot panels double. There's a full video for this and then backed with some of our trees and leaves and things. So fun things you can make. Here is a class we did last year, I think, for Autumn, a slimline card. I love fall most of all with our little tiny gnomes and that same pumpkin that you use today. And then a you know, our garden bench pop-up and our street lantern pop-up. So mixed together into this cute little fall, fall themed card. So thank you for joining us. Thanks to Stampin' Scrapbook Expo for hosting. You can check out all of our dye designs at karenberniston.com. And we'd love to see you for our next spotlight event in December.